Hi, Adam Bazalgette here, founder of Scratch Golf Academy. Great subject today, Ben Hogan's magic right elbow, the secret to great ball striking, right arm if you like, but we'll look at the elbow as well. A phenomenal ball striker, maybe the best of all time. Let's have a look at his swing, see what he did. I'll pick out three things I think that a good trail arm motion will do for you. We'll get into those and how to work on them. And at the end of the video, the final segment, hey, most people can't move like Ben Hogan, that includes yours truly. We'll look at how to customize things, what to look for relative to your body style so you can at least implement them. If you're new to Scratch Golf Academy, we would love it if you'd subscribe. Also hit the little bell there. You'll be notified every time a brand new instructional video is coming your way. Just before we get started with the great man himself here, just wanted to say we have a free app, Scratch Golf Academy app. Just type it in at the App Store. Lots of training tools you'll love to take to the practice ground. Some things that'll help you with reading greens, getting warmed up, etc. Hope you'll pick that up. Okay, Ben Hogan here, hitting a driver from in front. Things you'd notice. He lags the club like very few have ever done. He forms a tremendously acute angle in the downswing. We'll talk about personalizing that for you at the, uh, towards the end of the video, but it creates a tremendous amount of stored power. Club's close to his body. That makes it easy to move through the shot. I want you to notice also though, once he, now certainly he's leading with his core. Once his core has helped his right elbow load, that is to say get narrower, his right arm starts to apply pressure and forces his arms over to where the golf ball is. Look at where his left arm is there. Let's say the ball's just behind that second yellow mark and just look at how that left arm, that lead arm gets driven over here applying pressure to the ball and that right arm is just doing a tremendous job. So it doesn't just load, it loads in such a fashion as to drive the arms past the right hip there and drive them over here to a beautiful impact position. If we look at it on the left, great bit of film here in the black and white. Certainly with his flexibility, he's able to get that club on a tremendously shallow plane, which makes it so much easier to deliver it down on its swing plane, on its shaft plane through impact and rotate his body through the ball. Great for accuracy, of course. But you can also see, as we look from this view, that same sense that as the right arm loads, it then helps apply pressure, forcing both the arms back in front of him and applying pressure to the golf ball there as it goes. That's what you want. Shallow swing plane, lots of lag, apply pressure to the ball. Okay, certainly the body leads the downswing. Obviously we get some movement here, but what I find most golfers do, talking about the plane especially now and how this good arm motion can help you with that, what I find most players do, far too much trunk movement, especially trunk rotation and a sense of going out there on top of the golf ball. Best image I could give you really is skipping a rock. We'll use a golf ball, let's picture a golf posture. Certainly the body leads, but it's more of just a bump. The right arm would load. The key is I'm going to bring that rock or golf ball from the side of the body underneath me out in that direction. That's what you're trying to do with the golf club. Let's have a go. So we've got a little bump. And once that right arm's loaded, it's coming from underneath me to the back of the ball. This sort of an action. Skipping the rock's a great mental picture. Much better than the alternative. Okay, a couple of mental pictures that I really like. These aren't going to be that difficult. Let's have a look. Number one, take an alignment rod. I'm using my bag as, just imagine something I could whip there, a big curtain or something. If you had to really whip that thing, just about anybody I know would have some sort of dynamic load here and some sort of snap in the end of it. They would never do that. Now, secondly, and this is really an important one, you've got to apply pressure to the ball. That's what he's doing so well. So. I've certainly never done martial arts, you might be able to guess that, but if I had to take from a golf position the heel of my hand and knock this bag over, I'd have to recruit my core a little bit, I'd have to move, but most importantly, I would have to get the heel of that hand going forward, I'd have to get it past this leg, so I could apply pressure there to the bag. This sort of, this kind of jazz that most people do just isn't going to apply pressure effectively. So if you can do those two things, if you can create a little bit of whip, a little bit of load, not difficult to do, and you can do it in a manner that you're applying pressure. Let's try a little shot here. Yeah, I could really feel through the ball, some length there, some pressure against the ball, pressure against the turf. You have got the right idea. 
So now let's look a little bit at how different body styles affect swings. How much of Hogan's you know, mechanics can you get into your swing? Let's look at Sergio Garcia here on the left. One of the really great ball strikers. Very Hogan-like look in that point. Tom Watson, eight-time major winner. Certainly different swing characteristics, but a lot of this, no doubt, has to do with body and flexibility. Hey, that will get the job done for sure. That club shaft is in a pretty good spot there. It's aimed right at the ball but it doesn't have this ultra flat, ultra shallow look that we saw Hogan have that serves Sergio so well. Great move into the ball, as does Watson, of course. Let's look face on. Now here's Tom Watson years and years ago. The, the video's a little bit fuzzy there. Great outfit though with the pink visor and glove. Let's have a look. Sergio, tremendous lag. And if we look at Tom Watson, again, an eight-time major winner, one of the really great players of the last 30, 40 years, just nowhere near the same amount of lag. Clearly though, that will serve him. He's got some speed. He gets his hands in front of the ball as he hits it, gets a nice left arm club relationship. So that will do, but you have to be cognizant of your body style and what it's capable of. All right, as we look at this all important thing, then how can you bring the best of what Hogan's doing with that right elbow into your swing? Well, first test I would do, stand up nice and straight, put your trail arm, your right arm, straight out from your shoulder this way, horizontal, and without arching your back, move your arm backwards like so. I can get a little bit beyond the vertical, that's considered a full range of motion. Not ultra flexible, I bet Sergio and Hogan could put that hand way back there, but it's a full range. If you're a little bit more vertical or this way, again, don't let yourself arch your back to help out. Do it with just your arm then you're a little bit impringed. Other things, how much can you cock your wrist there? Both wrists, if you like. That's probably a full, pretty much a full range of motion. No question, Hogan had more than that. The final one, can you bend that trail hand back on itself? Most people can do that. Again, I'm about in the mid to full range. If you fall short in these categories, let's say you can only get to there, your bulkier are not quite as flexible or something like that. Hey, you're not going to get as flat as Hogan, and if you try to, you are probably going to lose your body angles trying to do it. So don't make the mistake of trying to copy someone you're not able to and consequently creating other problems. And as we saw from the front view with Watson, Hey, you need some lag, but get what you can get and make it work for your body. Let's give it a go for myself. Felt pretty good there. Wish I had a little more lag, but hope this helps you. Well, thanks for watching. I hope that opened up a few things for you. Try these out. Have some fun with it.